I have both endometriosis and Ellis Danlos syndrome. I always wondered if they were connected, and here is what I found. Before I do dive into my research, I thought it was best to first understand what Ellis Danlos syndrome and endometriosis are. So, what is Ellis Danlos syndrome? Ellis Danlos syndrome, EDS, is a genetic connective tissue disorder in which there is a defect in the structure or processing of the protein collagen. The Ellis Danlos Society explains that, and I quote, the Ellis Danlos syndromes are a group of connective tissue disorders that can be inherited and are varied both in how they affect the body and their genetic causes. They are generally characterized by joint hypermobility, joints that stretch further than normal, skin hyperextensibility, skin that can be stretched further than normal, and tissue fragility. So the symptoms can range from chronic joint and muscle pain, loose joints, skin fragility, scarring, slow healing, fatigue, osteoarthritis, and dislocations, amongst many other symptoms. There are 14 subtypes of EDS, and I have the hypermobile EDS subtype. Next important question, how is Ellis Danlos syndrome diagnosed? Diagnosis is based on the suspected type of EDS. I was suspected to have hypermobile EDS. In this subtype, symptoms and the Byton 9 point scoring system are used for diagnosis. I scored 8 out of 9 on the Byton test. So matching my symptoms of chronic pain, loose joints, osteoarthritis, fatigue, skin, skin fragility, and my Byton score, I was diagnosed with hypermobile EDS. Usually the other subtypes have different tests along with gene genetic testing, which isn't very conclusive for those with hypermobility. Well, that's how it is so far. I'll now explain endometriosis. Once I have done that, I will move on to the connection between the two conditions and how understanding this can change the way we think of our symptoms and how we would like them to be treated. Please remember, these are my observations based on having been diagnosed with both EDS and endometriosis, watching my own body, speaking to all my doctors who helped me out, speaking to a few other patients who have EDS and endometriosis, and the research I have managed to do. If you have been diagnosed with either, either of the conditions and you suspect you have the other, please speak to your doctor about this. Don't be afraid to explain your concerns. Now, what is endometriosis? Endometriosis is a condition in which the tissue that lines the inside of the uterus is found growing outside the uterus. The Mayo Clinic says, and I'm quoting them, the endometrial-like tissue acts as endometrial tissue would. It thickens, breaks down, and bleeds which, with each menstrual cycle. But because the tissue has no way to exit your body, it becomes trapped. That's the end of the quote. This is a condition in which you're battling pain, heavy bleeding, painful intercourse, bloating, nausea, constipation, diarrhea, fatigue, infertility, and did I mention pain? I think I did. It's just an, it just needed this extra mention because it can be beyond bad, debilitating, life-changing pain. In case you're wondering how endometriosis is diagnosed, well, here's how. There are various ways to see if there are any obvious signs of endometriosis. Other than the symptoms, the gynecologist will look to get an MRI, a transvaginal ultrasound, and a pelvic exam. But the only way to confirm an endometriosis diagnosis is through a laparoscopy, a surgical procedure in which tissue samples from the suspected affected areas are removed and tested to see if it's endometriosis or something else. So the next question should be, can endometriosis be cured? A simple answer, no, it cannot. But 
You can attempt to do your best to manage the symptoms through medication, diet, exercise and other natural forms of pain management. For many, when it gets unbearable, there are two surgical options in front of you. The first, ablation endometriosis surgery, in which the disease is burned, the chances of scar tissue forming and the disease returning is much higher than option number two, which is endometriosis laparoscopic excision surgery, LAPEX or L-A-P-E-X. It's supposed to provide long-term relief and a lesser chance of recurrence by scooping out the disease. It's a more invasive surgery, but that is supposed to make it more precise and the possibility of it coming back reduces too. And I had this surgery done in September 2019 and over the course of the coming weeks, I will talk more about this. But in case you wish to know more immediately, then I will link in the description box articles in which I've written about my experiences in detail. Okay, with all that explanation done, let's get on to the main topic. Are endometriosis and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome connected? As someone who has both conditions and would feel an increase in EDS symptoms on and around my menstrual cycle, I always suspected there was some connection. I soon started coming across many women who have both conditions. I soon started receiving a lot of messages on my Instagram from those who have EDS and wondered if they had endometriosis and those who had endometriosis wondering if they had EDS. They wanted to understand my symptoms and how I got diagnosed. Now all this questioning made me very inquisitive. I went on to Google and Twitter to see if there was a conversation happening about this. When I saw Annie Segura's tweet on endometriosis being a comorbid condition of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I got in touch with her. Well, her tweet said, I should tell you that first, is, quote, Plenty of people with EDS deal with this ankle roll on a daily basis as well as period pain for those that have periods. And endometriosis is a comorbid condition of EDS, unquote. End of quote, right? So Anna very kindly sent me the link of a seminar by Natalie Blago Widow on the Ellis Danlow Society Forum, which I will link in the description box. In the first 13 minutes of this video, you will find two things. One, those with Ellis Danlow's have bleeding disorders, most common with gynecological issues which means an increase of heavy bleeding by 33 to 75%, painful periods by 73 to 93%, and chronic pain of the vagina, painful intercourse by 32 to 77%. So if you have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, expect highly troubled menstrual cycles and sex life. Number two, Dr. Blago Widow does go on to point out that endometriosis is prevalent in 6% to 23% of those affected by EDS, which isn't much more than the non-EDS population. But what I wish to point out here is, as explained in point number one, that if you have heavy bleeding and pain, what else truly bothers an endometriosis patient? And aren't those the symptoms of endometriosis amongst, obviously, some other conditions as well? Plus, to be diagnosed with endometriosis, a lot of surgical deep digging may be required, which can prove to be tough on EDS patients for whom healing is slow. In fact, there is an added complication if you have endometriosis and EDS. With endometriosis, you have a higher chance of infertility, and with Ehlers-Danlos, you may suffer from more complicated pregnancies. Okay, it all seems quite complex, but as someone who suffers from both issues and speaking to my endometriosis excision surgeon, there does seem to be a connection between the two. Now, I don't say this lightly because I also came across an article by Jennifer Vang de Vecte in which she refers to Isabel Knight's book, A Guide to Living with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Vegte notes, and I'm quoting again, EDS 
can also affect the body's systemic collagen leading to, in, leading to increased risk for endometriosis, POTS, Raynaud's, bladder problems, fibromyalgia, headaches, restless legs, asthma, constipation, bloatedness, prolapse, IBS symptoms, anxiety, depression, and learning difficulties. End of quote. We have to realize that Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a connective tissue disorder. And connective tissue is found everywhere. If it can affect so many areas of our body, then why not the uterus? I also found a medical literature published on the National Center of Biotechnology Information, NCBI, website, which says, and I'm quoting again, Conclusions Careful attention should be paid to women with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome because of an association with many gynecologic complaints. Women with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome should be, should be questioned regarding incontinence, genital prolapse, endometriosis, and dyspareunia. End of quote. Therefore, in my non-medical but someone who is suffering yet logical opinion, I question why would endometriosis not be a comor comorbidity of Ehlers-Danlos? Before I end, I wanted to share how Ehlers-Danlos syndrome affected my endometriosis excision surgery. During my pre-surgery appointments, discussing Ehlers-Danlos syndrome with my endometriosis excision specialist surgeon was quite eye-opening. He went on to explain how he has personally seen an increase in the number of patients who come to him with both endometriosis and EDS. He explained how such patients needed to be treated with additional care as internally they're a bit different to his non-EDS patients and the recovery time oh, is much longer. This proved to be so true for me. Post-surgery, my surgeon explained how the tissue and ligaments were more elongated than usual, very EDS-like, and how my recovery time would be double than usual. Although this experience doesn't connect Ehlers-Danlos and endometriosis, but I found the increase of one patient with both conditions becoming a more frequent prevalence in his office, in my surgeon's office, quite in interesting considering EDS is rare and rarely diagnosed. Plus, it takes an average of seven years to, to diagnose an endometriosis patient. I believe all this delay in connecting the two conditions can lead to skewed numbers. So that's a mix of my research and my opinion. Again, I am not a medical expert that has medically researched this. If you feel you have either conditions please do seek professional medical help and be a good advocate for yourself. If you can shed more light on a connection or non-connection of these two conditions, then please do comment below or just drop in a comment to let me know if this video has helped. And if it happens to, then please do share, like and subscribe to this channel. Also, please remember, that all references mentioned in this video are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and supporting.